Hi guys, it's me again. I would like to welcome you to the second episode of our Middle Earth deck building channel. I hope you liked my last Witch King deck, but today we will play the good guys, understand a wizard, and as promised it will be Saruman the White. I have called this deck coming to Isengard. Let's begin with the narrative. Saruman has come to the southern lands and made friends with the peoples of Gondor. Therefore, he was sent north to the borders of Rohan to inhibit Isengard and became a warden of the western approaches. As Saruman, your goal is to explore and exploit the lands around your future base of operation, make friends or allies with the inhabitants and continue your search for the remnants from previous ages. Now to rules again. We will be playing a two deck game with 30 to 50 resources, 30 in our case today, with the same number of hazards, a 12 creature minimum. In the hazard pack playable with this deck, I have 14 and a half creatures, but this we will discuss later. In this game, we will be moving mostly in Rohan and neighboring regions. As you can see on the map, there are no Shadowlands or Dark Domains here, but we can meet some deep wilderness creatures, because short of Rohan, the lands are mostly wildernesses. And for those who like adventure, we will be exploring one under deep side and also visit Moria to find out what the dwarves were hiding there. Our starting company will begin its journey in Rivendell. The characters are nearly all Rohirrim, led by their king Theoden. They are joined by the steward of Gondor, who provided us, the White Wizard, with the lands and fortress of Isengard. Here Denethor II. I suppose I'm not the only one who is missing Theodred as a character to play, but what we can do. The two minor items are shields of iron bound ash, because Rohirrim are not durable characters. The first organization phase goes like this. Theoden influences Eomer and Erkebrand influences Eowyn, the only scout we start with. I expect the first movement to lead us to Lorien, but if we have the right cards in hand, we can go south, heading to the Gap of Isen from the west. When we have a look what characters are in the play deck, we can see two copies of Saruman, Hama and Gamling the Old as the remaining Rohirrim, Gondorian and Dunadans, Boromir II and Theoret, low-minded sage prepared for using Palantir or Marvel Stole card, Khan Burikhan as a representant of the Pickleman who lived here before the coming of Rohirrim, Pat as a Dunlanding shaman, and finally, a group of elves from Lorien, Galadriel, Celeborn, Haldir, and Orofi. You may ask, how do I plan to get these high-minded characters into play? But my answer is simple. I have played this deck several times, and usually there were a lot of dead Rohirrim and Dunedain, and also corruption has taken its toll. Only once I had an issue bringing Galadriel into play but it's not needed to bring everyone along. They are there just to ensure we will have someone walking around. If we have a look at the playable resources, you can see two allies, Noble Hound and Noble Steed, and one faction, the Rohirrim. The rest is a mix of all kinds of items, with one gold ring to be tested for a magic ring of lore using the ring lore to ensure the result two of the Palantirs and a wizard's ring. Great compliment for Saruman and his desire for rings, but the corruption may be the bane, so take care. The support resources are usually short events prepared for instant use. Marvel's told are a great card, but it's good to have one sage, for example Yoret, sitting in a heaven ready to use them for countering some mean cards like corruption. The rest are there to help us on our way. No need to keep them in hand, so discard them freely if you have no right use or 
if you can't use it now or in the next round. Also think about the special function of the Palantir of Orthanc. You can rotate some of the best resources as just go along. Now to what we will be playing were. I have put the size in alphabetical order for easier orientation. Some combination of sites and resources could be swapped, in this case Amonhan and Dimrel Dale, or Glittering Caves and the Ruined Signal Tower. You can also play one major item together with the James of Arda in the James Deeps. But take care not to discard Glittering Caves before entering and plundering the James Deeps. The same applies on the Duras. No need to play their Noble Hound or Noble Steed before mastering the Rohirrim. Beautiful Gold Ring will be played in Austin Anhill, where the Elves have probably lost it in the Second Age. Palantir of Wartang in Isengard and Palantir of Amon Sul. Well, for it, we will dare to pass the doors of Moria. When Saruman comes into play, slowly start getting resources from the sideboard into the play deck. By the way, what we have in the sideboard. You can see I started with the sites. Don't count them. Those are there just to show you these sites won't be used in the first round. Minas Tirith and Druadan Forest are there only to be able to come for some characters when you don't want to go to Lorien. The sideboard comprises of four allies, Shadowfax, Treebird, second copies of Noble Steed and Noble Hound, one more faction, the Dune Landings, Magic Ring of Words for the second test of our beautiful Gold Ring, some major items to beef up our characters, Align Palantir if we somehow lose the Magic Ring of Lore or a run out of the Sages, and also the Iron Crown if you need more points and dare to venture Moria for a second time. Choose well which items and resources to bring into play. It depends mostly on the way the game proceeds. Now we will have a look where to play which item in the second round, so you can see it clearly here. Dune Landings and Freebird have each just one possible site to be brought into play. Again, we can swap the information sites of Amon Hen and Dimera Dale. Shadowfax, Noble Hound and Noble Steed have together three sides, so you will have to play two of these three cards together. Iron Crown is for Moria, as mentioned before, and major items are playable wherever you like it best. The Hazard deck today contains of men and men only. They have some advantages and some disadvantages. The advantages are that they are easily playable in single wilderness, borderlands or border holds, some even in free domains and freeholds. And you also do not have to wait for the right combo for maximal effect. The disadvantage is that there is no combo to be had. But these creatures are strong enough individually, so do not be afraid to use them. But use the attacker chooses the target skill wisely. You also have an opportunity to discard opponent's items with some of the creatures, namely brigands and pickpocket. One Nazgul, Ren, is there for his special effect, so play him as a permanent event and wait for the best opportunity to tap him. The hazard events are a mix of easily playable cards. The important one is rank upon rank card, which I recommend to circle back using an unexpected outpost cards. Other hazard events are again playable easily, so this won't block your hand for long. A nice mean card is Siege, especially if your opponent likes to master large companies in which scout skill is not usually dominant. You can block him in one place for quite a few turns, when used smartly. If you need more creatures or just simply lack hazards in your hand, simply half your opponent's hazard limit 
and bring some of the hazards from the sideboard into the discard pile for a second turn. An extra embasher will come handy as well as some of the other Kui cards listed here. I highly recommend using the hazard deck against the Saruman deck we discussed today to get the knowledge of both. They are nicely compatible. I hope you will have a lot of fun playing Saruman, a much more adventurous deck than the Witch King before. And the next time, we will have a look at the Fallen Wizard deck, namely Palando, who will try to establish his own power base in the Southern Kingdoms, right at Sauron's backyard. If you like this card game and this channel is for you and inspiration, please like the video and press the subscribe button as it will be much appreciated. See you next time.